Hey guys, so I've been on a mission for the last three weeks trying to figure out a way to manually change the tires on my wife's 2011 Hyundai Genesis Coupe. And uh, I have some experience manually changing tires, uh, but those tires are 185 60 15s, so they have a very tall sidewall and they're narrow. Uh, so they don't really require that much effort to use a couple of uh, tire spoons to get the tire off. But this particular car has an 18 inch wheel and the tire size is 225, 45, 18. So this uh, is a very rigid sidewall tire and it's gonna require a little more effort than just uh, the, the two manual spoons that you see in the, uh, in, the, in the video here. But let me go over the parts real quick that uh, that, uh, that I used to get the tire off and then I'll show you the, the setup and then hopefully I'll be able to, to mount a tire for you. So let's uh, start off with the, uh, the, the car jack and the reason that it's in the picture is on one of my previous videos I show you how I manually break the bead using a tire jack and that's the reason that I have it here in the, in the video. And I'll link the, that video in the video description because the method is the same breaking the bead on a uh, 18560 uh, R15 tire versus a 22545 R18. The only uh, difference is you have to go around it a couple times to, to get that bead broken all the way around easily. Um, the Some of the other parts here that I have in the video, so if you guys have been looking at anything having to do with manually changing tires, you probably come across the Harbor Freight manual tire changer and that's what I'm using to manually change the tire but I've also added the uh, the, uh, the the Lucid Auto Works uh, apparatus that goes on the top that allows you to adapt a uh, duck bill and the duck bill spins around the outside of the manual tire changer and allows you to, to unmount and mount the tires so let me show you the uh, the thing so now this I was inspired by Lucid Auto Works' uh, setup and the way that he did it I thought it was fantastic uh, I don't have any experience welding so don't judge me on the welds this is my first attempt at welding and this was a stick welder and it's uh, horribly ugly I know that uh, and what I used is and I'll go ahead and I'll take this apart later on in the video so I can show you all the independent pieces but instead of using uh, steel collars and uh, thrust bearings, automotive thrust bearings. What I did is I 3D printed my own collars. And 3D printing can be very strong depending on how you orient the parts and, and design them. So that's what I have here. So I got some 3D printed collars that I designed in on shape. I have uh, a couple of uh, bushings that go inside this pipe. And again, I'll show you later on. I'll take it all apart. And then I have a uh, the uh, thrust bearing. And all the thrust bearing is is uh, a 3D printed part that I designed with some holes that go all the way around it and then I'm using some uh, BBs and these are just uh, air uh, air rifle uh, BBs as my uh, my rotating mechanism and you can see it works really well the tubing is uh, this one is 2x2 two two square tubing it's 14 gauge and this is uh, some uh, two and a quarter inch fence post and this particular one is a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I recommend if you guys are going to um, weld uh, weld yourself and you don't have a lot of experience welding, it's real easy to, to go through this material, especially with a thick welder. So if you don't have your amperage set just right, and I welded at uh, 70 amps using a stick welder and I was able to do it, but you have to be very careful not to, not to stay in one spot too long, otherwise you'll, you'll go through the pipe. So if you guys are going to do this, uh, I would recommend instead of going with a sixteenth of an inch thick uh, wall tubing, uh, at minimum a uh, 14 gauge. Because the 14 gauge is a lot harder to, to, to get through. So an inexperienced welder is not going to burn through this uh, very easily. So let me show you the uh, other parts here. So these, this is the, uh, the sliding mechanism. And what this is, is a uh, a receiver for a truck. So this is a, 
think it's about uh, two and a quarter inch inside diameter. And here's the part number, and I'll link it in the video description. That way you guys can pick one up. I think they're on Amazon for about uh, 17 bucks. This is um, also that two by two steel tube. And then uh, some 5 8 inch galvanized uh, nuts. And then this is a 5 8 galvanized nut, but this particular one was 4 inches long. I couldn't find one that was an inch long, but you need to cut these about an inch long. And then you're going to drill a hole through the receiver. And then you're going to tack weld your, your nut on here. And the way it works is you have the, uh, this part fits like this. It fits like this and it'll slide back and forth to give you the adjustment for different uh, width rims. And then um, the other part is uh, the duct bill. So this is some black pipe and this is uh, inch and a quarter inside diameter. And it's about uh, one and a half inch outside diameter. And this is, this is much thicker than 14 gauge. Uh, the, the thickness of this is probably overkill. But what's important is that uh, outside diameter close to one and a half inch. And then all I did is I, uh, I cut a piece of, uh, of steel plate. And that uh, plate was... Uh, let me yeah, 3 16 So 3 16 inch uh, steel plate. And I just cut out the uh, the little piece for the, the duck bill to fit in here. And how I got this, this pattern is I 3D printed it. So what I did is I jumped on the computer, got onto Onshape, created this part that uh, fits inside of this, this uh, duck bill. So this, this duck bill has like a recessed area where this thing fits right into and uh anyway if you don't have a bandsaw to cut this it's a real it's a real pain man i did it with a, a jigsaw and a metal cutting blade and then i used a bench grinder to get to the to the to the final the final shape but rough cutting it with that jigsaw was a real pain man so do yourself a favor and, and uh either buy a bandsaw or use a plasma cutter or something else because uh, doing it with a jigsaw is it's a pain uh, the screws are, um, let me get your measurement on these. These are quarter inch, quarter inch long, I mean quarter inch uh, diameter and, um, and about an inch and a half long. And then you also have the uh, quarter inch nuts. I put some washers on here. You could probably go with a little bit wider washer, but uh, not much more uh, because of this uh, limitation that you have here on this side. And the way that this thing fits together is the duct bill slides into this part. And this is kind of how it is. So I'll go ahead and I'll set it up on the machine. I'll show you guys later. Uh, another part that you're going to need is you're going to need a centering cone. And again, uh, they, they make these. You can buy these machined out of aluminum. Uh, I 3D printed mine. And this thing is super solid. I mean, this, this thing has 10 walls, 18% ink fill. And this angle here, I was uh, struggling with trying to figure out what this angle was. But 65 degrees is the angle that I use, and it works It works perfect. Inside diameter of the, of the uh, cone slides over the manual tire changer and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, a couple other things you're going to need to do is uh, you're going to need to cut one of the tire spoons down a little bit. And this one is just about 20 inches long. And the reason being is that once you get it up under the tire and you fold it down, you need it to go all the way flat. So if it's longer than the diameter of your rim, then it's going to be sticking up on top of the tire. And you're not going to be able to uh, to use it properly. Another thing that you can use uh, is maybe a, a long screwdriver. But the problem with the screwdriver is they're so thick 
that they're going to make it more difficult for you to be able to uh, get the tire off. So I recommend getting one of these and just sacrificing it and just making it whatever diameter your rim is so that uh, you, you have an easier time doing this. I also have some um, some lug screws. And so instead of being a lug nut, it still has the same taper as the lug nut, but instead of being a female, it's the uh, threaded side. You're gonna need three of these. And you're also gonna need uh, three of the nuts to, to fit those things. And what I did is I drilled the, those holes on the manual tire changer. It comes with a base plate, and I'll show you that here in a second. The size drill bits that I used was quarter inch as a pilot hole, and then a uh, half inch for the final diameter that uh, allows the uh, lug bolt to, to, to go down through the hole. Another thing that's going to be helpful is uh, some uh, rubber tube. So here I have just some garden hose that I uh, cut maybe. This, you, you may want to have this a little longer, maybe four inches long and split it in half and this will serve as a rim guard in case you do have to stick a spoon in to try to help out with uh, unmounting the tire then uh, this will protect the rim I also have a piece of heater hose and I want to say this is about uh, one and an eighth so about one and an eighth diameter and again this is to protect the rim from the tire spools If you get the Harbor Freight manual tire changer, the current models bring this little plastic, this little rubber uh, pad here. And you're supposed to use this under the wheel, but I find that uh, taking this off is better. It's better to have it solidly mounted on a piece of metal, just as if it was mounted on the car, than being mounted on top of this rubber pad because then it, it moves when you're trying to remove the tire. So use this for something else, and I'll show you what I use it for later. You're going to also need a big vice grip. So get yourself a big vice grip to clean off the uh, glue and residue from the rim. I'm using a uh, grout brush, and this is one that you can get at a uh, janitor supply store. This is a heavy-duty one. It has very stiff bristles and it makes cleaning the rim a lot easier. You're going to need a ratchet strap to remove the tire using the, uh, the car jack method. And then as described in my video, I'll go ahead and I'll link that and I'll show you exactly how these parts work in that video. And then you also have, uh, you're gonna need a 10 pound weight. Now the way that I have my thing set up, let me take you guys over to it so I can show you. So I mounted mine, I've seen a lot of videos where people mount the Harbor Freight manual tire changer on a, um, on a crate or on, on like on a pallet. But the problem with mounting it on a pallet is that a pallet is not very heavy. So you have to stand on the pallet to provide enough weight so that you can uh, remove the, the tire from the machine when you start to apply leverage to the, to the bar. Uh, and it's going to move all over the place and it just makes the job more difficult than it needs to be. The, another thing that you can do is mount the manual tire changer directly to the floor in your garage, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to drill holes in my garage floor for this. So instead, what I opted to do is to use my uh, uh, my homemade ramps. And these are made with uh, two by, I want to say these are two by tens. So these things are about 70, 79 inches, 79 inches long each. And it's uh, four layers. So the longest layer is the uh, bottom one, and then they get uh, shorter as they get to the top. But these things are very heavy. To begin with so by bolting them both to each other using the manual uh, tire changer as the, uh, the the piece to to link them together makes it very heavy and difficult to move and then I went ahead and I just added uh, some some weights on the on the very ends to stabilize the whole thing so it doesn't move all right so let me show you this uh, what I did here all right guys so let me point another thing out so on a lot of the videos that I saw on this manual tire changer and the way people mounted it is that this thing 
this metal this metal bar here is is hollow on the bottom so it's just it's just a uh like a like a half square and since the bottom is open when you take this and you start to crank on these bolts you bend the hell out of this out of this metal here and i, I didn't want to bend mine all up so what i did is i cut a piece of uh, two by four to fit in here and i uh, i made it a little narrower than two by four when you guys get your manual tire changer it's going to come with this slot cut in here and they provide a pin that uh, slides down there and that pin keeps the wheel from rotating but since this slot allows that pin to move sideways when you crank on the wheel from a certain angle it's going to walk it's going to walk off center uh, it also brings this mat so I've, i found this mat uh actually gets in the way i want the rim to be directly in contact with this this flat plate i don't want this squishy membrane in between because then you lose energy when you when you're applying leverage to turn the uh, the duck head around so i want it bolted directly here uh to get these uh these holes uh marked on the thing what i did is i i mounted the uh the rim and i'll show you how i did that and then uh, to the size holes that i used uh, i used two drill bits one is quarter inch to drill the pilot and then half inch to drill the final diameter hole for the lug screw so let me go ahead and uh, put the rim on there use the centering cone and show you exactly how i was able to mark these holes in the right position you need to make sure to get all this uh, tape and uh, junk off so i already already cleaned the wheel it was covered with brake dust but this this rim had no weights on it so the weights went flying off and you can see you can see right there where they were they just flew off and what I'm using to break down the adhesive is some general purpose 3M adhesive cleaner. And what I do is I just pour a little bit right there and like a little puddle, another little puddle over there, and I just let it sit. Let it sit for about 10 minutes and, uh, and then test it. You can try to scrape it up with a little card like this. And if it, if it comes off real easy, then you're good to go. Go ahead and remove it. If it, uh, it's still giving you a hard time, just give it another little soak. Wait another 10 minutes. And it'll come right off. All right, so look at how easy after letting it soak a little while. There's the whole thing right here. Now what you want to do is give this another little, a little soak, and then get yourself a uh, stiff bristle brush. This is for cleaning grout. You can get this at a janitorial supply place. Get yourself a little paper towel. Wipe it off. That's it. Okay. And then do the same thing with uh, any other sticker residue. So this one I had soaking a little bit. Let's see if it's see if it's loose. No, this one needs a little bit more time. So I'm just gonna turn the wheel a little bit so that little puddle is always on it. And apply a little bit more of the uh, general purpose adhesive remover. And just let it soak. All right, but it's very important that uh, you clean all of this, this area here where the bead is going to go. Get all that rubber and, and all that junk that was on here. So I got this one pretty, pretty much cleaned up. But, uh, yeah, when you first take the tire off, this is just covered with rubber debris and all this stuff and and this this stuff is what keeps the uh, tire from getting a good seal and and it leaks out its air over time so by taking the extra time and cleaning the the rim properly you can make sure that all these uh sealing surfaces will will hold up and uh, i try to run my hand around here and feeling for any rough spots if there's any rough spots you can take a little uh wet sanding paper and just hit the little uh, rough spot make it smooth so when you run your hand along here it feels, uh, it doesn't feel rough. All I'm doing is I'm putting the rim down and more or less getting it centered. And then to verify that it truly is centered or to get the final center, you use the centering cone. So just push this down over the shaft and then you're gonna w wiggle the, the wheel 
until the cone is firmly seated at the bottom. And then once it's in there, I'm going to put the lug nuts in. And I'm just going to drop the lug nuts down. And I went with three holes. I think that three holes is good. You got two that don't have any lateral movement once they're tightened. And then you got the slot just as additional insurance. But the slot one uh, by itself is, is not going to be adequate enough to hold the rim from moving. To make certain that you're centered is you can put the, the, the arm, the rotating arm on, and then tighten down on that centering cone until you tighten those lug nuts. All I'm doing is just using one of the tire spoons and give it a little tightening. It doesn't have to be crazy tight because we're not relying solely on this to hold the rim. It's just simply centering the, the, the wheel to the base plate, base plate of the machine. And then if you guys haven't used one of these, this thing is fantastic. So it's kind of like a crescent wrench with, a, with an additional uh, lock. So it'll snug the, the grips down. This is really handy if you're working by yourself and you're trying to do something. You can just put the tool on. And then just lock down the uh, so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the uh, tire on. So I'm going to take the, the arm off. Now the rim is secured to the to the tire changer. It's not going to go anywhere. Now the first part of the bead is really easy because all you have to do is uh, push it on. You don't really need the machine to put the first part of the bead on. And the reason is is because if you look at the tire, you can see that. Let me see. Maybe you can see a better at this angle. So this part of the tire is already is already rounded, right? So this will slip over. You can push it down over the rim because this is rounded. Where you can do this is on the opposite side because the opposite side is not rounded. It has a hard corner right here on the, on the inside. So that, that, that inside part needs the, the, the tool to get it on. But this one outside lip, you can actually push it onto the wheel. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate this outside with a little bit of dish soap. And I'm also going to lubricate the top lip of the rim, and then I'm going to press it on. So let me uh, lube it up, and I'll show you how that's done. All right, so this is all I'm using. And you can get some proper tire lube. I just find that this works just fine. And you want to make sure that you lubricate the, ro the right side. I'm actually lubricating the wrong side because it has to. this side has to go on first. I'm just going to turn it over and lubricate this side. Some tires rotate in one direction. So you have to pay attention to any markings that are on the on the tire itself. Some will say outside, so you'll know that this face of the tire has to be on the outside. This particular one doesn't have either. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to use the the red and yellow dots provided by the manufacturer on the outside because they got to line up with the valve stem. So if you have an aluminum wheel, you're supposed to use the yellow dot. Uh, and that needs to be lined up with the valve stem. The reason for that is that's going to minimize the amount of weight that the tire, that the wheel is going to need to balance. And then I'm doing the same thing with this, with this, uh, this lip here. I'm applying the, the dish soap to the outside, which is what I'm going to use to press against. And you want to make sure that you, you uh, clean up your hands from the slippery soap, otherwise you're going to have a hard time. All right, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to push on the, uh, the tire. And I want to do my best to make sure that the, uh, the yellow dot is as closely aligned with the valve stem as possible. That way I can minimize the amount of futzing around that I have to do to get it in that position. So I'm just going to... Get, get on it, and I'm going to push one side down. And it's important that this, if you look at the, if you look at the rim, let me show you something real quick. 
if you look at the rim, the rim has this this low spot here in the in the center, okay? This low spot is called the drop center. And we're going to we're going to use one edge of the tire needs to be in this drop center. And that's going to give it enough room on the other side to stretch over the rim. So if this tire is not down in this if one side is not down in this drop center. The other side will never stretch over the rim to get up over the over and on to the wheel. So all I'm doing is I'm using my I'm using my, my hip to push down and then I'm just gonna push push the tire on. All right, and then once it's like this, again, make sure that this this uh, yellow dot is lined up with the valve stem. Let me show you what that's supposed to look like. So you want that yellow dot lined up with that valve stem. All right, let me go ahead and put the uh, duck bill assembly on. doesn't have to be very tight, just snug. I'm going to slide our duck bill assembly over the, the arm. And then we're going to pull the, the tire up so that you have a gap on this side where you're going to put the duck in. And I'll bring the camera closer here so that I can show you exactly how to do it. All I'm doing is I'm sliding this, this back. I'm getting this thing here on this uh, on the rim. So you want the duck, the duck head assembly on the rim, and you want it pressed up against the rim and down. And then once you have it like this, then you can go ahead and and lock this lock this arms in place. Doesn't have to be crazy tight, just snug enough that the that the uh, that none of these things are gonna move. Okay, so make sure that that's down. All right, guys, so now this is a tough tire to mount because it's so low. So lubricate this side. Don't lubricate this side. Don't lubricate this side of the underneath part of the wheel because then it will just rotate around as you're trying to, to mount it. Again, the, the, the way the tire goes is one side under the duck head. This is for mounting. One side under the duck head, the other side over the, over the duck head. So this side is down. On it. I'm going to push this side down with my knee to keep this part of the wheel under the duck head and also keep this side in the drop center. As I'm holding this down, I'm going to rotate this thing around. There you go. All right, now that you got that on there, then you can take the uh, take the duck head out. All right, so now just to remove it, I'm going to just unscrew it.
All right, so there it is. There it is on. My yellow dot is off by about two inches, an uh, inch and a half. So that's why it's important to make sure that that thing is as closely lined up as possible. And since the tire is so low profile, there's no turning it. If you're dealing with a uh, a uh, skinnier tire that has a, a taller sidewall, then you can you can squish it enough to to get it to 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 get into the right position. But in this case, uh, that's all she wrote for this one. Now to air it up is real simple. What you're doing? I'll go ahead and I'll air it up. I dismounted the tire. I took the little valve stem, the little valve stem seal out. So you just reinsert it and it goes with the little pin side down. Um, so this is like the uh, the side that has the little seal that goes facing down. The threaded side faces up. Kind of hard to get the camera to focus. But anyway, this is how it goes in. And then the little tool, the way it works is it has a, uh, a notch cut in it. Let's see if I can do this in camera here. And the little notch fits fits in the tool like that, and that's what allows you to tighten and loosen it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it. And when you're dealing with a with a wide rim like this, and a uh, and a low profile tire, it doesn't take much to seat the bead. Um, so I'm just gonna you don't have to you don't really have to mess with it. All you gotta do is just apply air to it, and it will it'll pop the uh, the beads into place. So I'm gonna do that. When it pops, it makes a—I mean, it's like a startling, startling sound. So just keep your fingers away from the edge of the wheel, uh, the tires, because it, it will pinch them in there. This this one's not in yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer that one. Sometimes if it doesn't want to go. Valve gauge tool here. It's got a little meter and a bleed valve on the side. All right, guys. So here's the uh, the assembly, and I'm gonna pull it all apart so you guys can can see how it all goes together. Here's what's interesting, what I just noticed. This thing gets enough force put on it that it actually bent this uh, this tube here. Wow. So this thing is a, uh, this thing is a 3D printed collar. So it just has a uh, Phillips. So here's the little 3D printed collar. And then there's a uh, three D printed washer. And the bearings right on this, and you can see the uh, see the little track of the bearings. But it worked great, it handled the weight no problem. Uh, you know, I wouldn't use this in an automotive application, but for something like this, it worked perfectly fine. 
And then here are the, uh, the little bearing assembly. So all this is is a uh, 3D printed part. And the um, it's got like a taper that designed into the piece, and the bearing won't won't go all the way through, but it'll 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 just sit in there real nice. So if you look at it from the uh, from the profile, let's see if I can tilt this back enough so I don't lose the bearings. You can see that that uh, when you put weight on it, the the little uh, center piece that keeps the bearings from falling out of position uh, just rotates around and it kind of floats so that's how this part works and then you have the uh, this other section and this this part here is a is a is a bushing Go back down here let me pull this top section off And again, you got another set of bearings. Followed by another washer. And then you got the bottom the bottom collar. And to assemble it, all you're doing is putting this down on a flat surface. Uh, drop the collar on. Make sure that the collar is square with the... Uh, with the bottom of this pipe and this is the original part that comes with the harbor freight and i had to remove some of this paint and some and clean up some of this this weld that protruded out because it made fitting the uh the other pieces over this uh more difficult and then lastly lastly you have this uh this piece here so these are see if i can get them out of here So all this is is a little shim or bushing. Again, 3D printed, and its sole purpose is to to shore up this this play here. And you can see that one, once it gets down here, it, I mean, it has very little movement. Maybe uh, I don't know, quarter millimeter on each side, half a millimeter movement total. And then you got the same thing, same thing on the on the bottom. It's another one of these. We'll wiggle it out of there. That's pretty much it. I mean, real simple, and it works. It works perfectly. The thing that's tricky is welding on this this thin this thin wall pipe. Uh, you got to be careful because you can go through it, like I did here. And again, uh, you know, this is my first attempt at welding anything. Uh, one thing I will tell you, if you try to, uh, if you're welding for the first time, I was under the impression that the thickness of the thing that I was seeing through the uh, welding helmet was the weld, but it's not. It's actually a combination of the weld and the, uh, that, uh, that flux that's, that's on top of it. Which, which you knock off. It's, it's kind of like slag. Uh, but it makes the weld look bigger than, than what it really is. So you, you want like this huge puddle of, of weld. Or you want it, to, it appears to be a huge puddle of weld. But a lot of that thickness is, is the slag that's on top. Which you knock off with a little hammer. Or use a, a steel brush to, to get off. But anyway. Yeah, my welds are horrible. Uh... I'm hoping to improve on this over time. Hopefully, I just got to pick up some scrap metal and just play with it. But anyway, yeah, it was a cool project. I enjoyed doing it. Um, it's it's a cheaper endeavor to just buy the completed Lucid Auto Works manual tire changer. I think he sells his deluxe one that's all assembled and ready to go. Uh, includes the duckbill adapter and everything else for about $499. I'll link it in the video description because... My hat's off to him. He did a great job making his tool. And, uh, you know, 
a, a knockoff or or home brew version of that tool is not not as easy to do as as he makes it seem like it is but uh yeah so for me my total cost for this project uh was 609 bucks but that included the welder the adapter for the drill press to be able to uh, drill out this this uh this hole here and, and create this shape on this square tubing so yeah i had to pick up some new tools but the good thing is if i had to do this again it's not going to cost me nearly as much because i already have the, the equipment so guys if you're new to the channel consider subscribing turn on your notification bell and leave me some comments i love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as i see them all right guys this video is a wrap i'll catch you guys in the next one take care